because money is going to follow you when you're doing the right thing and your work with the right people. And it doesn't have to be immediate, but it always will. That's my experience. Irina Meyer, thank you so much for joining me on 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I love your show. Thank you. You have such a non-linear path that I can't wait to dive deep and understand how your values are, are progressing you through your different life decisions. But, you know, as a brief intro, which will do no, uh, no service to the incredible things you've done. First of all, you're an Emmy Award winner. Let's put that out there. I can't wait to hear what that's about. But you actually started, or you didn't start, you, you progressed through financial institutions like Bank of America. You're a huge investor, and I think international investor because you speak six languages. I have to understand what that's about. Irina, talk to me, who are you? What, what is the, how do you do all this stuff? I don't know. I just do things which the most normal, the most natural for me, which means uh, um, uh, I, I always do the thing that I feel is the right thing. I walk away from the people who are um, wrong people. And I think that's very important. And I follow the passion that I have. And I always, at any point in time, uh, make sure that I give back. So anytime I fail and uh, or I'm in a bad situation, I push forward. Anytime I win, I have to pose and make sure that I share my success with other people who also need a break. So that's kind of how I roll. And I also I learn all the time. I never I never stop learning. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. Okay, so so talk to me. How do you start from a place like Bank of America and then move on to a place like ABC, Motion Pictures, win an Emmy? What what's that about? So um, I was working in, uh, um, indeed, in the technology group. I was uh, at the Bank of America, and it's actually in the beginning was the um, countrywide. Uh, and I was working doing the technical risk assessments uh, uh, for the uh, central group, which means for the headquarters, all the projects of the value above $20 million of business impact will go for me. Then um, when 2008 happened and uh, I just uh, was seeing what was unfolding with the countrywide, that uh, uh, no matter how good the 200 people around me were, the company was deeply corrupt uh, and uh, created such an incredibly devastating trickle effect or contributing to it in the country. And even though I just was promoted four months prior to uh, ADP, I walked away because wow. I never wanted, and I didn't have another job lined up because that just, I knew that was not right. And that was me walking away from the wrong people. And I didn't want to create any kind of uh, explanation for myself why I should stay. So, I so Irina, on that note, what, what yeah. so you mentioned right at the offset that the, you you are guided by your values, and yeah. that guides your non-traditional, non-linear path. What what are these core values that you are addressing here? Absolutely. So you need to make sure that your work being contributed to something good, greater good. You do not give it away your work for something which is meaningless or have some kind of short-term pragmatic effect. It's just not for me. Whenever I work, it's really need to be to make better the uh, social environment. It needs to be towards the creativity. It needs to be for the better of the of the people. If it does not go there, it just it stops for me. And I know that I have quite significant success and I have my personal uh, capital fund that I run and it's international, but I never followed what will be my short term or even mid term uh, financial gain because money is going to follow you when you're doing the right thing and you'll work with the right people. And it doesn't have to be immediate, but it always will. That's my experience.
Inspiring. Okay, so moving on to a digital media and television and the Emmys. Mm -hmm. What is this industry that I have not? I don't know anything about it. So, so you go. What does that mean, even digital media and, and making those innovations over there? Of course. So um, digital media progresses. So what is it today in 2020 is very different from what it was in uh, 2010. So uh, when I was there, digital media, it is the way to uh, for the people to connect with whatever they love. So it doesn't have to be uh, for the network television. I was working for ABC, but on the digital media. That means that uh, whenever there were Oscars and I was running Oscars production for the three years is to bring wow. the experience to the people <laughs> not make it not leave it as an elite you know you just there is on some kind of magazine cover Angelina Jolie and you have no relation you create those bridges you connect it via your laptop your computer you, and, and many uh, uh, of the um, iOS devices Androids, you bring it to people. How to make it relevant to you? And every time and every day of working in digital media, that's what we were doing. May, if it is about Oscars, make sure you are there. That means that the cameras that I would supervise to put in, the you, every person from millions connecting to the live stream, they had an impression that they can move it at any point. And um, they can be there and watch what people do during their, their during the commercial breaks and wow. uh, uh, bring it home. And that is, that is really fascinating because uh, that's what we want. We do not want to just uh, be um, on the outskirts. We want to be part of the show, and that's what the digital will do. So what are some of the challenges that you faced as you were trying to innovate the, the, this concept? So what does that even mean for, for me to sit at home and be present at the Oscars? For example, um, you... Um, uh, you are invited. That's that's the thing. You receive the golden envelope. You are invited. You can choose to go and see uh, where the stars take a champagne. You can decide what dress a trophy girl. I'm not being obnoxious. It's an official name called trophy girl. The girl who brings the the brings the Oscar. That's that's the position. What will she be wearing? And that's will wow. be competition among like ten different. Uh, coming totally unknown designers unbelievable and people can be present at their catwalk which will be done before and and the winner will be announced during this time that means that on the red carpet there will be your digital media hosts by the way we had our boat right next to operas and then where we will be talking for our fans for our viewers from from home not necessarily just bringing more people to the ABC channel so that the ABC channel will sell more ads. It's for the people who can just log on their phone and or on their tablet and just be there and their questions would be answered. Amazing. Yeah. But that's radically different from, you know, being an investor. You're investing in yes. early stage startups, yet here you are being a creative, you know, you're, you're running creativity to how to integrate, you know, the at home experience with is something like as amazing as the Oscars, and by the way, you got the Emmy in 2011. For and what was that for? For innovation in digital media? Yes, it was outstanding achievement in interactive media. Unbelievable. And that was, uh, the product was uh, um, Oscars digital experience. So that's the whole package that we did, and that we were unfolding for the five months prior to the show. We recorded, we created four television uh, shows for our web presence. We did the um, meeting with the stars, with the nominated stars. They were uh, designer contests, they were sweepstakes, there were many things prior to the event. So the whole package of it was uh, um, Oscar's digital experience. And we rolled it out on iOS only, uh, um, it was barely eight months after iPad was out. 
and it took, uh, um, I believe, three years till something similar were rolled out by uh, somebody else, which was MTV later on. So wow. yeah, it was actually a big deal from technological perspective. I worked with over 20 different contractors in addition to over um, uh, 15 of different internal groups for ABC uh, and uh, the infrastructure groups at the Disney, which is a parent company of ABC. Unbelievable, so. unbelievable. Okay, and then let, let's move on to your to investments. So you're running an early stage fund. You're investing internationally, which is mm -hmm. which is unique in its own way because most venture capital funds, especially early stage, they're focused on on a certain geographical region. Yet you're you're branching out, and is that because you speak six languages? Is that is that a part of it? No, I'm not sure because uh, I uh, learn languages for years before they eventually become useful because <laughs> it is <laughs> so um, it is uh, it helps uh, when it comes. But I am once again, I avoid this uh, uh, pragmatic effect. Why don't I learn German so I can invest in Switzerland or in uh, it's it happens in, in, in a similar way or why do I learn Mandarin Chinese for the last 10 years and it's only a year ago when I became a board member for a company which is doing development in China. Wow. So it comes eventually together but it's not because of that. And I agree with you that is not conventional. I'm the only person in my company. The fund is my personal. I don't have any LPs. And for an individual, a one woman operation to say, you know, US is not enough. I made only last year six investments in Israel. Wow. And I invested in a Swiss company and I'm a, and I'm in, planning to do more. I'm a member of two groups uh, in Zurich and in Zurich. And uh, um, yeah, it is, uh, um, but there is a method to the madness. <laughs> I'm not just uh, being. Uh, um, trying to overextend myself i plan specifically let's say when i go to israel i have a plan what is it what type of company interests me what type of innovation what groups i need to work i know what proportion of my portfolio i want to be dedicated okay. to this specific area which is med device life science in israel which i find absolutely extraordinary Amazing. and that i wanted to be within about 20 25 to 32, 33 percent of my portfolio. And I just work diligently for a very long time before I trigger my investments. But whenever they are ready, I'm very decisive and I'm just going and I'm executing it. Same thing that I would do in Switzerland. And recently, I invested even in a company out of Sofia, Bulgaria, my very first East European wow. company. Wow! But how do you even how do you even find these companies? Because the deal flow is its own struggle. There's so many, you know, early stage VCs around the world now. I don't know how many there are in Eastern Europe, but but around the world, in Israel and and US, of course, there's a lot. So how do you go and and find those deals so that when you want to be decisive and, and execute, you actually have access to the best deals? So that is an absolutely wonderful question. And that is the biggest issue I think that exists with private investors right. is to have access to the deal flow and be able to see through it correctly. And uh, um, I've been very fortunate in the fact that I've been able to create an extraordinary network. And because I'm never afraid to walk away from something that doesn't work or being very outspoken when something is uh, subpar, um, that uh, um, I have really wonderful collaborators. And I spent huge amount of my time, perhaps over 80% of my time, doing pro bono work for other investors. Okay. When I do that, and I do not ask for any, and that goes back to my core values, and I do not ask for shares or payment of any kind, I will get back the most interesting deals these people will be working on. 
and they will be sharing it with me that they might, might be even reluctant to do with somebody else. And it's not only with private individuals. VCs like partners and VC firms will reach out to me and say, hey, Irina, I came across that. That's our fund is investing. And uh, would you like to have some space in the round? And uh, uh, that is, uh, that I think is- uh, It's all about relationships. Creator for me versus many other private investors in this so space. It, it, like so it's all about the relationships and it sounds like, again, the, the, the pro bono work that you're doing and all these different experiences and the values that you're exuding, they're, they're not about getting something in the short term. You think you're saying, I'm operating my life in the long term and, and if, I'm, if I'm kind and if I'm helpful to others now, I'm not expecting anything in return but but you know accumulatively over years these relationships are these relationships go both ways and it's not just that they're helping me they want me to be in a partnership with them because they know that my values are are true and honest yeah and oftentimes it doesn't come through and i'm completely okay with that sometimes people just consume the piece of work i've done and then that's it and you know what i never have a hard feelings about it because i know that i'm doing the right thing and that says that's is it and uh, um, the access to the most interesting innovative company to the ceos who need mentorship who need help who needs introduction and it's uh, everything that i do is collaborative every single thing Amazing. i never just find a gem and says okay that is just for me i hope nobody hears about it i don't want to do any work for them because it would be free no i will tell about it and i will help sometimes i do work for the c uh, for the company and for a ceo for years without even being an official advisor because that is how i can help my companies to gain value and to come to the next level of financing, reaching the new audience, that I'm not a passive investor. And I think it's also, it helps me to get um, much better results than probably uh, on average uh, in the space. Amazing. Irina, what is it about languages that you that you love so much? How do you get to learn six languages? And, and what are those six, by the way? Well, my mother language, my mother tongue is Russian, and uh, um, then obviously it's English, French. I got in. Fr uh, I was in Paris for a year, and I learned the French literature and French language in Paris. And then um, I uh, uh, speak German, and that is my most recent language. I started learning Chinese back in 2006 or so. Um, I am quite fluent in Mandarin. Um, I speak Spanish uh, fluently, which definitely helps. Uh, um, and I don't know, maybe I missed something. But well, next one, next one needs to be Hebrew, of course. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> but as long as you know I love it because it breaks the barriers right. between me and other people and other cultures. And it makes my life richer because I can read, I can watch TV in whatever language, I can travel and I can talk to people. And I am very people oriented. And I feel like my world is brighter and bigger and happier and than wow. it's would be otherwise. I love it. Irina, what is the one thing you're most passionate about? Like, What gets you so excited every single morning when you wake up about the work that you do? About the work that I do, yes. It is, I feel like um, an individual have an opportunity to make a huge effect on the society at large. And I'm not talking about one country's society. It is we I feel like I can, I am making a difference, whether it is from my volunteering work for the Amy Foundation, or whether it is by mentoring somebody who brings the new way of uh, um, uh, popularizing something that was used to be available only to elite, or bringing the medication, the new molecules that is gonna save lives and prevent suffering from uh, 
uh, women suffering from breast cancer, it's from uh, uh, early diagnosis of the oral cancers, and it also make difference for the life of individual entrepreneurs who strive with their dreams or in their creative side. Well, everything is creative, but in the uh, television arts uh, for Amazing. the young people out of Alabama, Mississippi, who want to be producers in Hollywood. You want to give them that chance. And when you can, by finding for them an internship in uh, with one of the studios, you feel like that day was a good day. And uh, uh, it's just for them. It will be nothing for me. But it feels more than anything else that uh, uh, I can receive in the form of payment stock or something else. Irina, inspiring, inspiring. Right before we leave, I can't believe 20 minutes are already up. I need three words that best describe you. And I want to thank you for really the generous time that, you're, that you've given me here. So um, that is a good question. So number one will be decisive. Um, so I am capable of making decisions. Right. So that would be definitely passionate. Passionate will be the second one because uh, if I'm not passionate, I just don't do it. And uh, um, the third would be, uh, um, I don't know why, but that's what people seem to differentiate me from others. I know no fear, so I'm absolutely fearless. There is no such a thing that somebody can scare me. Decisive, passionate, fearless. Irina Todalaba, thank you very, very much. We didn't even talk about J Ventures and, and, and how I love collaborating <laughs> there, but, but, but we'll leave that for another time. Thank you for everything. Uh, sure. Really inspiring, just thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. And I hope to collaborate sometime soon with perhaps my own venture. So we'll look out for the Good email. <laughs> Would love to. Please think of me next when you're building something new. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.